Hey everybody, so how do you create a repository for your PowerShell modules? In this episode, we're going to find out. So this question comes from my advanced PowerShell class. You see, in this class, we spend a lot of time learning, going really in depth on functions and creating our own commandlets and then creating our own PowerShell modules with lots of bells and whistles. But then a question came up, well, how can I distribute this throughout my organization? Well, there's actually two different ways that we can deploy a PowerShell repository. Now, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at it by doing it through a file share. For this test environment, I have two domain joined computers. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be uploading our module to a repository we're going to build on the other machine, and then we're going to import it into this machine. If you're interested in a copy of this code, go to the InfoTech Zone YouTube channel page, click on the community tab, and look for a posting on September 5th, 2024. First off, I have a link to Microsoft's documentation on both ways of how to create a PowerShell repository. Now, the host for this repository is going to be on a machine called DC1. The name of this repository is going to be IT Repo Directory, and IT Repo is going to be the share name that we're going to create so we can connect to this repository. So our first step is to create a folder on the remote computer and then create an SMB share so that we can connect to this repository. So here we're going to be using PowerShell's invoke command to connect up to that remote machine. And then we're going to send some commands over. We're going to use new items so that we can create the directory that we're going to be storing our modules in. And then we're going to use new SMB share to create an SMB share for us to connect to. Now notice full access is going to be to our domain administrators and read access is going to be to our domain users. Let's go ahead and execute the command. And now I'm going to run get SMB share and we're going to be able to verify that we are able to see that new SMB share that we just created. Our next step is going to be to register that repository on our machine so that it knows that it can trust the code that's published in that repository. We're going to be using the register ps repository commandlet to do this. We're going to give it the name of the repository. Then we're going to give it the location of where the repository can be found. Now, since we are doing this as a filed share repository, the source location and script source location must be identical. And then this is where we tell it that it can trust this particular repository. All done. We're going to use the new module manifest PowerShell commandlet. The path is going to be the path where the module is currently being stored. And this module manifest needs to have a file extension of PSD1. I'm going to add in the root module, which is the name of the module that we're creating this manifest for. And you guys can see I added in the author or company name. Now, the module version is very important because we use this when the update module commandlet is executed so that PowerShell goes back out to this repository and can check to see if there's an updated version of your module. Um, giving it a little bit of a description. And then we can also add in tags. In this case, I'm just going to use the word test. That way, if I do a find module, I can find I can use the tags parameter and type in test, and it's going to find this module. Let's go ahead and create the module manifest. And now for the fun part. Now we have to remember we're publishing this as a file share repository, not a NuGet server repository, which is the other way how we can do things. So the command I'm about to show you is going to have a little catch to it. We're going to be using the publish module commandlet. Now when we do this, we're going to give it a path, which is where our module is currently stored at. We're going to give it the repository where we're going to upload it to, and then we have the NuGet API key. Now, even though we're not publishing, publishing this out to a NuGet server, we still need to have the, the parameter uh, NuGet API key and just give it any value you want. Let's go ahead and publish. Now, since this is the first time that I'm doing this, it does need to download some software. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes to download the NuGet.exe software. We're going to let it do its thing. Now remember, this is just a one-time operation to get all the software so we can publish onto our machine. Next, we're going to do a find module and we're going to specify our repository and we can see that it found it. 
So let's go ahead and we're going to install the module called test repo mod, which is the module that we deployed. There it goes. Now, time for us to see whether or not we have access to the commands in that module. So I'm going to do a get command focusing on that module and you can see all of my commands are there. We're going to run those commands and they all function, which means that we have successfully deployed our module out to our other server and we have installed that module back into our system. So having a private PowerShell repository in your organization allows you to more easily distribute approved PowerShell code out to your users. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next episode.